born after the research is done you know, that, that the fetus already hears um, sounds from 20 weeks in the womb. So, um, after just, so all of this is, what is the effect? Uh, we also know that the brain development is very much stimulated by listening to certain kinds of music as opposed to others. Music is a universal language, music is something that brings us together and draws us apart. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was my main reason why I wanted to go into psychology. Because psychology is the study of human behavior and the study of how these, these different um, aspects interrelate to make us who we are. So from what you've been saying, um, you went into music because of you know the, the context you were in at that time. Yeah the most appropriate thing of your choices that you had, music teaching. So by heart you were a teacher interested in music and then you said you studied psychology. Um, did you do a full-time degree? Or? No, I was fortunate to, um, could, I could do the first three years at that time, it was a three year plus the honours. Mm -hmm. So I could do the, the three year psychology, the major, yeah. in one year. So I did self-study for the I think the first and the second year courses, and I did um, attended class for, for the third year classes. Uh, it's a little story. I had the very first class that I walked into mm -hmm. was um, uh, the statistics class. And I come from school with a very difficult in mathematics. And you were quite mature at that time. Yes, I was mature. I was over 35 at the time. <laughs> So I was still very hesitant, you know, you have that, that foreknowledge that mm. mathematics is not my bet. But here I walk into Peter Rai's um, statistics class, and the very first thing I had to study in psychology is statistics. And that didn't make uh, it <laughs> And I actually did not register until I finished the first uh, midterm test. And I actually passed it. <laughs> and then I decided, okay, now I can, if I can pass that, I can pass the rest. The rest is easy. It's not like my studies. So, and I did eventually, and eventually my master, I had my honors course when I continued now with the research methodology and the, the statistics, I ended up doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. And that is when I also um, studied psycho, um, psychometrics, um, psychological assessment, and uh, we, we actually did these tests on ourselves, and I discovered that there's no real big difference between my verbal and non-verbal. So all those years that I didn't do well in, in, in numbers were basically because mental block. a mental block. Or maybe science. So, <laughs> but in the in the in the end, I still prefer um, the qualitative research yeah. because I like the stories much more, and I can hear much more of the individual's own stories than to always look at numbers. A person is not a number in my yeah. mind, and therefore working with numbers is not my favorite. Okay. And I prefer the qualitative research. And then in terms of your masters, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about that journey? My masters, I did I initially apply for the research masters, but maybe in, in good course did not get in because um, I was a single parent at that time. My children's father died very young and then uh, it would have demanded time out from me that I did not have, could not have. And I could not stop working. I was working at the university at the time as a lecturer. And so uh, and then all, given all the circumstantial uh, issues, uh, it was maybe the best for the best. But I then did my academic masters um, looking into the impact of music, the influence of music on the productivity of office workers. Okay. Uh, um, and it was a phenomenological study okay. with Rex von Fieger. Okay. Um, so that was, I did that while I was working at um, the University of Victoria, as I say. And then I continued at the same university with my, my PhD. Were you working um, in the Department of Psychology? Yeah, in the Department of Psychology. Okay. And were you, you were teaching? I was teaching personality theories and developmental psychology. Okay. Occasionally did an intro class. I did a biological psych class. Um, but eventually 
you focused on this idea of developing a cycle? So it was that an option for you, or were you just kind of, this is what we have available, the personality and developmental psychology was it was, uh, it, it was always an interest. I, I mean, I, I, yeah. the, the developmental psychology has always been really interesting, is how do we develop, mm -hmm. how do we, how do our um, uh, circumstances, how do the, all these multitude of influences Actually, I was just listening earlier on to um, Silver Ryzen's presentation, presidential address, and, and, and I mean, from the ecosystemic perspective, uh, the person is not an island, and there's so much that goes in. And um, in a sense, for me, raising my children, being a parent, was like having a laboratory at home, <laughs> and I could go through all the phases and, and understand that. Personality had the the other dimension of development because mm -hmm. as we grow our, our personalities evolve. Um, so uh, for me that the, the two things go hand in hand, yeah. the two courses. So and at the time when I was lecturing there, there was a need for somebody in personality. Uh, I can't remember actually whether the who was teaching developmental because it came very early on that I started teaching developmental. I think it was some other people who just left and I stepped in, or people moved on to teach I mean graduate mm -hmm. and I stepped in. So I, I, I really cannot remember that in detail. But uh, those were the, my two favorites. I mean, I did, as I say, I did the biological side course, mm -hmm. which was a big challenge because having done all my schooling in Afrikaans, yeah. uh, I was confronted with teaching biological psychology in English. And to, to explain all those neuropsych terms in, uh, in English uh, took me quite a while to, to, to study them again. But uh, in the end, I discovered that actually I do know more than the students, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, teaching at university has always been for me a great uh, stimulating experience. And to a large extent, keeps me young because I do like to interact with young people. I have a real passion for the students and uh, this eventually comes through in, in how I, I learn from you. So you can't say you're from Macau. Yes, I'm from Macau. And you mentioned that you're involved there at the University of yes, Macau. So can you backtrack and take us a little Take us through how did you end up in the cow with uh, you okay. are involved in? Yes, I, um, start, uh, I attended a conference in 2002 in Baden Baden in Germany, which is a conference on systems theory and cybernetics, where I was at that time presenting on my music um, mm -hmm. research because that was there I studied the systems theory and cybernetics. So I met with somebody there who was there from Macau um, and saying they started up a program, uh, would I be interested? Uh, and uh, I can still remember my saying this, um, yes I would be, <laughs> that's kind of who I said. <laughs> so then I got back, that was around August, beginning of August 2002, got back, thought a lot about it, um, so what did you very uncertain years? Yeah, it was kind of, you know, maybe. <laughs> um, uh, I, I rarely say yes if I'm not sure why my yes is yes, or no if I don't have a good reason why I'm saying no. So maybe it's a good way okay. to think, to, to, to leave you space to think about it. So um, I was thinking, uh, I was at a time at Pretoria University where I felt as that I was so overwhelmed as coordinator of, of the undergraduate and honors courses that I just didn't have time for research. Okay. Uh, so I felt very, in a, in a sense, stifled. Um, and this was an opportunity to go to a much smaller university where I could change track. Um, so after much thought, also considering at the time my youngest child was approaching the end of his um, uh, first degree. Okay. So I was basically in a space where uh, 
I love to keep this reason as saying is that uh, before the children uh, left the nest and I would experience the empty nest, I decided to fly out. <laughs> so the eagle flies out <laughs> and leaves the chitling chicks to get on on their own. So that was, so this opportunity came along and uh, I got the job, so I left for Macau in September 2003. And um, how was that experience for you, leaving your, your children, are they still based in... No, my children at that time, uh, two were studying at Stanford in the master's degrees, and the other two was finishing their um, uh, degrees at Pretoria University. Um, so basically two was already out. Okay. Um, they were already thinking about their future, where they would work. I, uh, uh, I did uh, tell them early on is that uh, I will support them until about 23, and then I think they should start supporting themselves. So um, they were, their doors were opening for them, and I had a very big house in Pretoria, which I thought is, living alone in this big space is not my idea of the future. Um, and um, uh, so I went uh, with um, anticipation. Um, obviously, there's always the, the negative people about you that tell you know, all the horror stories mm -hmm. about China. Stories you One that? of the horror stories was, oh, the Chinese eat fetuses. <laughs> Now, now it's dogs. <laughs> oh, it's dogs. Oh, the dogs are Korean. Um, eventually, what I did was to, to read and study a little bit about the, the stories from that. And I read a very book, good book by, oh, it's a very young, uh, it's Wild Swans is the name of the book. Okay. Um, I can't remember the English name. It turned out that she, and I was born in the same year, so it really made me very, connected with this, uh, it really resonated. And then, so so when, as she went through how she, and she was writing about her grandmother, her mother, and herself. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a hundred year uh, story mm -hmm. about how her mother, her grandmother already um, changed the, mm -hmm. the way that, they, that she was pursued. But then it was very